Are jewel cichlids African cichlids? What's a good beginner fish and what to do when you have an ammonia spike? I'm gonna answer all three of those questions and pick an interesting comment of the week in this episode of Tank Talk. Hey folks, it's John with KG Tropical. Super excited to be bringing you episode three of Tank Talk, having a lot of fun with this series. If you wanna see your questions answered in a future episode of Tank Talk, put them down in the comment section below. If you have a video or a photo that you wanna to attach to those, send those to kgqna at gmail.com and put a little comment down below to make me aware that you're sending that video over to it. Okay, all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first question. First question today comes from Walter Briggs. Hey John, love your channel. I have subscribed and liked many of your videos. Thank you very much. So in part one, you briefly talked about juice cichlid. Now every pet store in my 100 mile radius classifies them as African. I'm setting up a 110 gallon mixed tank from the three lakes. Threw in juice because <laughs> at the time it seemed like a good idea. Now I have about 15 fish all together with no real bad problems, but should I really take him out? Please, I need a, I need a little more info on the Jews, cichlids. Thanks a lot. Isn't spell check a wonderful thing? It just provides so much comic relief. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. Obviously we know he was not talking about Jew cichlids. He was talking about jewels. Uh, this is extremely common. I mean, People are drawn to these little red gems because they're gorgeous. They're beautiful fish, bright red in color, and the, the, the label says African cichlids, but the reality is they are not the same African cichlids that we're used to when we think about what the African cichlids are. When we talk about African cichlids, we are referring to the fish that are from the three rift lakes, not the ones that just happen to be from the same continent as those fish. So jewels, not Jews, but jewels are from the continent of Africa. That is where they originate. If you were to get one that's a wild caught jewel, it would be from the continent of Africa, but it would not be from the three rift lakes, Tanganyika, Malawi, or Victoria. They would be from rivers and streams on the same continent. So the water is actually very different in those areas than it is in the Rift Lakes. The, it's a lot softer water. It's similar to like the South American rivers and stuff like that. So water parameters for jewels are very different than uh, the three Rift Lakes, but they're also extremely hardy fish. I mean, they can tolerate a lot. I mean, most of the fish that you're gonna deal with are gonna be from fish farms and stuff like that. And they were probably bred in the same water as your traditional African cichlid fish. So it's, it's, the, it's not a, water parameter issue as much as it is an aggression issue and the fact that they are very different. The, the way I would describe it is putting a jewel with African cichlids from the three rift lakes would be similar to putting an Oscar with, with Africans from the three rift lakes. Does that make sense? It, it's very similar. That's the way I would describe it. Can it be done? Sure. Have I done it? Yes. But is it ideal? No. It's about as ideal as putting an Oscar with Africans. It can be done, and it can be done successfully, but the rule book would tell you not to do it. The other thing, you thought that African cichlids from the Three Lakes, I have to keep saying that, were labeled as aggressive, like they are fighters. Well, you ain't seen nothing until you've seen jewels. Jewels can be extremely aggressive, even more so than your Rift Lake African cichlids. So, Keep that in mind too. I mean, I haven't had a huge problem with them, but if you get two and they happen to be a male and a female and they decide they're gonna find a little cave and breed in it, watch out, because they can be pretty nasty. But they're gorgeous, they're bright red, they're one of the true red fish, which makes them stand out and they're beautiful, but not ideal to put with African cichlids. Next question comes from Brian Carter, says, John, I'm about to purchase my first fish tank. I've been obsessed with fish all of my life, I've never owned any. I especially enjoy the Lake Malawi African cichlid because of their beautiful colors. But I'm not sure that's a good fish for a first time fish keeper to start off with. What would your suggestion be for a first time person that is really wanting to be successful with this? Thank you in advance for your time and advice. 
Uh, you are a, well, no, this was only a few months ago, so yeah, you're still brand new to this. Okay, so African cichlids as a whole, where I'm not gonna break them down between the three or the different lakes or anything like that. African cichlids as a whole, the biggest challenge with these fish is not how hardy they are. They're pretty hardy fish. The biggest challenge that new fish keepers have a hard time dealing with is the aggression of the fish. If you get a bunch of tetras or a bunch of live bearers or something like that, and you put them in your first aquarium, you're not gonna have to deal with that. It's rare that you would have to deal with something like that. But with African cichlids, it's instant. The second you put them in your tank, you're gonna have to deal with aggression. And that's something that a lot of fish, new fish keepers are intimidated by. Can a brand new fish keeper with their first aquarium be successful keeping Africans? Absolutely. We had tons of people that we helped set up their first tank when we had our shop. We filled their tank full of Africans and they never had any problems. Uh, I mean, they had the same problems that every new fish keeper has, but because it was Africans, it didn't add to their problems mainly because we guided them through the whole process and we made sure that we put the right fish in and all of that kind of stuff. The tank was set up right with the right decor and the right size and everything else. Uh, so one of the biggest pieces of advice that I would give you, uh, if you haven't set up your tank by now, you sent this back in September, research, 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 research. You can't do enough of it. If you have your heart set on setting up your first aquarium and having that be an African cichlid aquarium, you can do it. Don't let anybody tell you, no, you have to be an advanced fish keeper in order to do that. You don't, you can keep them, they're fine, but do your research and make sure that you do it right. Don't make the common mistakes that people make, like buying a one inch frontosa and putting them with five inch haps. I mean, you know, don't make silly mistakes like that. Do your research first, know what you're getting into and know what you're setting up. If you want my personal opinion of the best thing to do to start off with African cichlids, it would be to go against something that I've said a million times on this channel, and that would be to stick with one particular type, meaning do an all Imbuna tank, do an all Peacock tank, or I'm not gonna say all Hap tank, because Haps need a big tank, and if it's your first tank, it's probably gonna be smaller. So start with Imbunas only, or Peacocks only. Just like that, it's a gorgeous tank. You can have Peacocks, and they're beautiful, easy to keep, you do have to deal with aggression, but you're probably gonna have the, the biggest chance of success doing it that way, rather than going out and buying a bunch of Imbunas, a bunch of Haps, a bunch of Peacocks, a couple of Frontosas and some Victorians, putting them all in there, you might have some problems there. Let's keep it simple. Let's do just Imbunas. How about that? Imbunas are cheap, they're colorful, they're beautiful. Yes, they're aggressive, I know, but you can get a very rewarding experience from an Imbuna tank right off the bat, even when they're small, because they're so pretty. So that'd probably be what I would suggest. We've done that several times with our old customers, and that's how we would do it. Just peacocks, or just hat, or just imbunas. And they were always successful. So I hope that helps you. Don't be intimidated by African cichlids. Uh, if you were asking this about discus, I would probably say, let's not do that. Let's do angels instead. They're very close, but they're a lot easier to keep. You know, you don't have to be quite as knowledgeable to keep angels as you do discus. Pretty much anybody can keep angels. With Africans, it's not much different. You just do have that aggression issue. But anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now. Yeah, you can do it, um, but let's just not go crazy with it. And now is the time for everyone's favorite segment, the comment of the week segment. It's my favorite because I get to have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, this one was put onto my Python video, which I was actually very proud of, and a lot of people like that video, but this particular individual, not as much.
Is it ironic that the guy's name is Jurist? Hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> I already commented on the on the link thing. I mean, who doesn't do that anymore? Can you blame a guy for trying to make a dollar? I mean, come on. The, the fact is, you do a product review like that, of which you have not been paid to do. Why would anybody pay me to do that? The fact is, people are going to order that product based on that video. I've seen dozens of people say that they're going to buy them because of that video that I did. That's going to happen whether you get a commission off of it or not. So why not take the free money? It's going to happen anyway. Why not take the free money? I don't feel bad about it, and you shouldn't criticize people for doing that because everybody does it. I'm not saying I do it because everybody does. I'm just saying, hey, it's common sense. People are going to order it anyway. Why not do it? So that first point you made, whatever. If you don't like that, don't watch YouTube anymore. The second thing is... Gravel in the tank is not needed for any reason whatsoever. Are you kidding me? Do you know how a fish tank works? Do you have to have substrate? No, you do not. But does it serve no purpose whatsoever? If you think it serves no purpose, you know nothing about aquariums. I don't disagree with your granite tile, quartz tile, or porcelain tile. Personally, I think it looks dumb. But that's just me. If you like that, that's fine. I think gravel or just the glass bottom looks better than putting silly tiles in it. That's just my opinion. If you like it, that's fine. But this is what I had the most fun with. Make sure to keep... Here we go. Make sure that you have flow over the bottom of the tank, period, to keep any waste in suspension so it will be removed by, by the filtration system. This shows your ignorance here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want the poop to be in your filter? No. It's easier if the poop is in the substrate because then you can get it out and you don't have to clean your filter twice a week because all of the poop is in there. But the fun part is that you said it keeps it in suspension. So what you told everybody with this comment, because you're such a genius, was keep the poop floating around. So that it, just keep it floating around. It looks better that way with my porcelain tiles and all that. Come on, dude. Let's, let's be real here. When you are going to express opinions, that's fine. We can have different opinions and we can still be friends. I'm guessing you probably don't want to be my friend, and that's okay. But we can differ in opinion, uh, but when their opinions are, are just like presented as facts, I, I don't know. That just seems... Kind of silly to me, but anyway, you know what? My name is everywhere. I'm all over the place. You can Google me, and I'm, I actually show up like three pages deep. Uh, and it wouldn't have been difficult to figure out to at least have the respect to spell my name right. J-O-H-M. It's not that hard. So anyway, I, I'm sorry. Th this is kind of fun. Jurist, I'm sure you're a good guy, good girl. I don't know who you are. I can't really see the... Uh, I can't tell what your avatar is. It looks like Super Mario Brothers. I don't know, but I'm sure you're a good guy. Uh, this is just having some fun here. We disagree, and that's fine. We can disagree, and we can still be friends if you want to. Okay, so the last question comes from Elazar Rivera. I hope I'm saying the name right. Hi, I recently became a subscriber of your Love Your channel. Been really helpful, and I recently became a Cichlid fan. Anyways, I got me a 55-gallon aquarium, been running it for about two months, and finally I added about 20 cichlids, about two inches each. My pH, nitrite, and nitrate are, are perfect, except my ammonia, it seemed like I can't get it to zero. It's always at 0.50 parts per million. I do my weekly water change, 30 to 40%, but never goes under or over 0.50. Any suggestion of what could be going wrong, cichlids are fine. They swim around, always moving, active when feeding. Thanks, Elazar. Okay, so here is the thing. First of all, I hope I'm saying your name right. I hope it's Elazar. Elazar, Elazar, I, I, know, I hope I'm saying your name right. You've, you have done what so many fish keepers do. Uh, they start up an aquarium and they believe that they're doing everything right. The guy at the fish store said, I have to let it run for a while to let the cycle happen. And so you let it run for two months. You're like, it's gotta be good, right? I test the water and it tests out perfect. After two months, this thing is good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put fish in it. But what oh, this the mistake here, and what a lot of people don't realize, newcomers to fish keeping is, just letting the tank run accomplishes nothing. 
because there needs to be something in the tank which will produce ammonia, which will then allow the nitrogen cycle to occur where the bacteria grows and converts that ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. If there is no ammonia in the tank, there's no reason for the cycle to start, and so your water is just sitting there running, and it's nice and clean, and everything's fine, and you t do your test, and it seems great, so you put fish in there. When you put your fish in there two months later, that is when you started the cycle. Because when you put those fish in there, and then you started feeding them, and they started to produce waste, the food and the waste started to break down and cause ammonia in the tank, and that is when your cycle started, was when your fish were in there. I hope I'm making sense here. So the cycle never happened in your tank until you put your fish in there. So what I'm trying to do here is get you through this, even though you sent it to me two years ago. <laughs> I'm trying to get anyone watching this that might be in a similar situation through this ammonia problem but also help you to understand how the nitrogen cycle works all at the same time. We'll get you through it and we'll educate you a little bit on what the cycle is all about. So again, nothing happened in your tank for those two months. You, you believed, and I, I'm not mad at you for it, you believed that you were doing the right thing by letting your tank run for a couple of months. But the problem is there was nothing in there to run. It was, there was nothing happening. Life was not happening in your aquarium for those two months. So. What If you're someone that is just starting out in this hobby and you want to do what uh, Elazar has done here, you want to let your tank run and you want to let it cycle uh, before you put fish in, that's awesome. I definitely encourage you to do that. However, just simply letting it run doesn't accomplish anything. You need to introduce an ammonia source. That's why some people do a fish in cycle. I've done it a million times successfully. I've done it sometimes and it's been a problem that I had to get through. Never really lost fish, but getting through it is a, a whole other story. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but there needs to be an ammonia source. Some people will literally put liquid ammonia in the tank. That's kind of old school and not really necessary anymore. But it can be done, and I've actually gotten comments from people on YouTube saying that they still do it that way, and that's fine. But there's other ways you can do it by just throwing fish food in there. Nothing's going to eat it. It's going to go in there. It's going to rot. It's going to cause ammonia. And there you go. That's going to start it. Another thing that can help it is to uh, introduce live bacteria by way of products like Quick Start and Fluval Cycle. I'm sure that, I think that's what they still call it. Uh, Dr. Tim's makes one, Fritz makes one. A lot of different companies make a aquarium cycling booster type thing. But again, if there's no ammonia in the tank for these the bacteria to feed on, it's just gonna be completely wasted. So there's gotta be an ammonia source in there. Fish are a great ammonia source. That's where you are. Elazar, or you were a couple of years ago, but when you put the fish in there, they started to produce waste, which started to produce ammonia, and so now you're basically, you let your tank run for two months so that you can now do a fish in cycle. That's what's happening here. So what you need to do to get through this, you need to allow the cycle to happen while also saving your fish, and so what I'm going to recommend to you to do is to keep a nice big bottle of Prime or, or the other companies, all the companies have great water conditioners that eliminate ammonia uh, or, excuse me, they detoxify ammonia and nitrites and all that kind of stuff while also conditioning the water. You're going to want to keep that handy. Now, I want to make you understand this is not a problem solver. This is a Band-Aid to help you through this process. Prime, I'm just going to use Prime as an example, does not eliminate ammonia. It makes ammonia more tolerable for your fish to be able to handle. It doesn't get rid of it. It'll still show up on your tests, but it makes it less toxic for the fish so that they can get through that. So don't think, I'll just put Prime in there and that'll fix it because it won't. So use those products along with your cycling products like the Quick Start, stuff like that. Uh, that's API, Fritz has one. I already said it, everybody's got those. Um, but then also you need to be doing heavy water changes throughout this process. While you do your water changes, this is the controversial part, don't do anything else. Don't clean your glass, don't clean out your filter, don't heavily vacuum your substrate. 
You want what's in those things to continue doing what it's doing. You want that bacteria to grow. What a lot of people do, the number one mistake by new fish keepers is they find that they have an ammonia problem. And so they go crazy cleaning everything because they want to make it as good as they can for the fish. And what you're doing is taking three steps back in the whole process because you're removing that bacteria from the aquarium. So just do the water. Don't touch your filter. Don't touch the substrate. Remove water, put clean water in, use water conditioners. Do that every day if you have to. I'm not saying 100% water change. I'm just saying do large water changes every single day if you have to, but only the water. And then hopefully after some time, you'll notice the ammonia will drop, the nitrite will spike up. Continue doing everything the exact same way. And then eventually the nitrite will go down nitrate will come up and then you're in that golden zone where now you can start to cut back on your water changes and come up with a maintenance schedule that's going to keep your nitrates at bay keep them low as low as possible and then you're golden and then you can start getting into your once a week water changes or whatever it is it's all going to depend on how much you feed your fish the size of your tank, the filtration that you have, how many fish you have in there, all of that is gonna come into play when it comes to creating a schedule for maintenance. Uh, but you know we don't have enough time to talk about all that. So there you go, that's how you get through the ammonia problem, and that's why the ammonia problem's there to begin with. I just love this, this is so much fun, it's just relaxed and we're just talking and we're having a good time. I, I enjoy it, I really do hope that you are too three episodes down. Uh, this has been fun. I enjoy these. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy them too, because this is going back to the roots. This is what I used to do, and I love it. I hope these videos don't end up being too long. When you see me with my hands going all over the place, that's when you know I'm having a good time. So hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Uh, if you are, again, let me know in the comments like, click the like button, click the subscribe and the bell and all of that jazz. Do all of that stuff. It definitely helps to support the channel and it helps me to know if what I'm doing is working. And there you go. We all like that pat on the back every once in a while, right? So there you go. Three episodes down and, uh, and I'm enjoying it. And there we go. If you want to participate in this series, if you want to see a question answered, I'm not going to yell at everybody, so don't be scared. Put them down in the comments. You can say, hey, I like what you're doing. You asked me to tell you that. And now here's my question. Put it whatever you want. Put the comments down below that you'd like to see me answer in a future video. I can't guarantee that I'm going to answer every one, but I'm going to try. If you have a video that you want to attach to your question, send that to kgqna at gmail.com and we'll have some fun. As long as they keep coming in, I'll keep making the videos and maybe I can convince Lisa to be a part of one of these too. Who knows? That'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? So she won't be as strict as I am. She'll be sweet and nice about it. And maybe this series needs that. Maybe this series needs some niceness. Maybe I'm a little too firm. I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for watching it. That's what this video series is. It's just relaxed and it's just talking. So there you go. They're probably going to end up being a lot longer than my other videos. Again, I'm repeating myself now, and that's when I know it's time to cut things off. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.